Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to do another painting with Aquila paint. Now I showed you this paint last year when they came out with their original version. Um, now they have a new and improved version where they have added seven colors to the line. They have improved the color density, uh, made the colors richer, and made the color payoff a little bit more intense. They have also come out with seven new colors, and the colors are smoother, creamier, and easier to use. So um, if you've been kind of thinking about trying this paint I highly recommend it because it is just a dream to paint with. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to do today. We are going to paint these colorful roses and I'm going to show you a bunch of techniques from wet into wet blending. We're going to sketch directly on our canvas. I'm going to show you a canvas wetting technique that makes your paints flow a little bit better and I'm also going to show you how to go back in there and rework some areas because one of the benefits of the Aquila paint is that after it dries you can go back in with a wet brush and you can actually wiggle it around and turn that back into paint again reapply it, mush it around, do what you got to do, um, and then let it dry. It takes a month and a half to cure, so you have a little more working time uh, to go back in and touch it up. Unlike acrylics, where once it makes that chemical change and goes into, you know, its final cured state, you can't lift it back up again. You have to paint over it. So this just gives you a little bit more of a working time, kind of like gouache. It has this appearance of oils where it's got this just lovely kind of um, satin, matte sheen to it, not quite as flat as gouache, um, but it dries quicker than oil. So it's got a lot of advantages here. And if you've been feeling um, like uh, you have struggles with those kind of um, effects in other paints, you might want to give it a try because it's very easy to work with. So without further ado, let's go to the table and I'm going to show you how I painted this. I'll be using the 18 color set today and I will include a link to the paint and a coupon code in the video description. I was really excited to use this paint as it was recently reformulated using the highest quality pigments available. Aquila is also extremely environmentally friendly, so you don't have to sacrifice your health or the environment in order to create art that will last. So are you ready to see it in action? Well then, let's paint! I'm starting off sketching my roses with a water-soluble color pencil, and I love to do this anytime I'm going to use a water-based media because that way I'll have no pencil lines, and if I change my mind, then I um, they'll just dissolve in with my painting. I am sketching in um, the little rose petals within the balls that I drew at the beginning, and then I'm sketching on some little ovals for some buds and also sketching on some leaves. So keep this sketch nice and loose but accurate. So you'll probably have noticed that I have a lot of colors on my palette, and I generally work with a limited palette of colors, but because I was trying out this set of 18 colors, I really wanted to get a good idea about what colors were in there and how they interacted with, an, with one another, and also if I could mix this many colors together and still keep clean and vibrant mixes. And uh, great news, I was able to. Um, and um, this technique I'm doing here is I'm actually spraying my canvas, and then I am picking up the paint straight and then just kind of tapping it on. I want to have an out of focus um, background kind of look, like as if you were uh, taking a photograph of a rose and you were focusing it on the rose and then you let everything get all blurry with like a uh, shallow depth of field. That's kind of the look I was going for uh, with this painting here. So I just wanted everything to be kind of mushy. I didn't really want mud, but I definitely wanted kind of dark, deep, low saturation colors here. And um, the colors that I've used are uh, Burnt Umber, and I've used some, um, I think it's Thalo Green, and also some Ultramarine Blue, Yellow Ochre, um, and I'm just kind of making all the other mixes with those, and I really think they turned out well. I thought I might as well paint the edge of the canvas while I'm at it, since I have all those colors um, right there. And um, yeah, I, I like to paint the edges mainly because then if I don't want to frame it, um, I don't have to, it still looks finished, and I can sell it that way, and then the person that buys it can decide whether they want to put a frame on it or not. Always turn your canvas around so that it's comfortable as you're painting. Um, there's no need to get a crick in your neck just because you're, you know, keeping that canvas still. You want to definitely make sure you're comfortable. Now, I've obviously sped this up. This took me about an hour to paint. Uh, so just kind of keep your expectations reasonable when you're painting. Don't try to rush it through. It's, um, it's fun to paint, so take your time. And if you get any paint where you don't want it, uh, just go ahead and wipe it out with a rag. And since these are technically white flowers, I am picking up a lot of colors in there. Um, they're going to be white. I didn't want to have that background color in there. So I'm starting off with some warm yellow in the center for like the um, 
you know, the, the like a spol the stamens in the flower. And then I'm just kind of uh, picking out some vibrant colors such as a nice pure yellow and um, some aqua and just like other colors I can see undertones in. Now I am going to link a reference photo in the video description so you can check out the photo I used, even though the, the uh, flowers aren't quite as colorful as I'm painting them, but um, but you get an idea of, of what I went from anyway. And I've just been just kind of maximizing the colors and using my imagination a little bit. And if I see a hint of pink, then I'm putting a lot of pink because that's kind of what I'm going for in this kind of Fauvist, impressionistic type of painting. Now the method that I'm using here to paint these flowers is more of an oil painting method. I know that this Aquila paint is going to dry a little bit slower than my acrylics. So I can go in and throw these dark colors down and then go in and tap in some white like I'm doing right now. Um, the thing that I find like when I'm painting with oil paints because they dry slower is that the white is a very powerful color and once you start adding that it kind of gobbles up and and just eats up the other colors basically it just almost like envelops them so because i was painting white flowers uh i wanted to put that white in last and then let it kind of meld my tones together i hope that makes sense i find that when i'm like using oils just that white will want to overtake and so i kind of wait to the till i've established my colors uh, before I put the white in, in case it wants to kind of um, make everything kind of disappear, I guess. If you've ever used oils, I'm, I'm sure you probably understand what I'm getting at. If you're more of an acrylic painter where things dry so quickly, um, it might be kind of a new concept to you. Now, even though I sped this up, I am still painting pretty fast to take advantage of the blending that I can do when I add the white and then mix into the other colors. But um, so if you're painting a little slower, what I would recommend is that you paint one flower at a time. Now, one other recommendation I have for this paint, and I have discovered this over trial and error because I've been using this a lot lately, is uh, I recommend you work on an easel. Now, I'm working flat because that's how my video setup um goes so that you can see my palette and my painting. But the problem with this is sometimes you might drip water on your canvas. You're much more likely to do that than if you're working on an easel. And if that happens and you don't notice it right away, when you go to blot off the water, it will lift up your paint because with Aquila, the paint does not cure for a month and a half. That's great news if you like to go back and rework stuff. Um, in that respect, it acts much like a gouache paint. Um, so like if you get to the end of the painting and you're like, oh shoot, I wish I added a shadow here. Well, I know. I'll just wet my brush and get a little bit darker paint and I'll just repaint that area. You can do that. But if you spill that, if you spill a drop of water on it and you forget and then you go to blot it up, then you've got like back to the canvas pretty much. It lips it right off. Um, you know, if you do that while you're painting. Of course, after a month and a half, you're free to varnish it or leave it as is and you will have a nice, strong, durable resin finish. But I wanted to let you know that. Now you can start to see that the painting has taken on an impressionistic um feeling. Now, the Impressionists would paint with colors straight from the tube, and that's kind of what we're doing here with all these different colors I put out. And what their goal was, was to capture the feeling and the fleeting beauty of the day and, and capturing more of a sense of a place versus a realistic interpretation of it. And they did that with pure colors and painterly strokes. And that's really what I was trying to achieve here. And they used oil paint for the most part. And um, I feel like the Aquila gives me the water mixability, um, the water cleanup, but the faster drying ability that I like with acrylics. Now I use water mixable oils sometimes, however, it, they're still going to be wet as long as oil paints. And I have a busy household. I don't like to have a bunch of wet canvases sitting around for cat hair to get stuck to or kids to bump into. So this is great because it will be dry to the touch in about an hour. Um, even though it doesn't cure for a month and a half, my kids aren't going to walk by and like brush their sleeve in it and it's not going to wipe my painting away. So it really is a wonderful hybrid paint. And uh, if this sounds like the qualities that you like in a paint, I really recommend you giving it a try. Now, one thing about this paint that I felt was a little different than other paints that I was working with is the point when the paint starts to dry on the canvas, not cure, but just dry as you're painting, it goes through the stage where it feels a little gummy. If you're really still trying to rework an area, what I recommend you do is grab a stiffer brush uh, with water on it and then just gently work over that area until you've reconstituted that paint to wet again. And then you can work in that area just like you were working in oils. So I wanted to mention that because if you're an acrylic painter, that little 
overall stage where it's going from wet to dry, if you were using acrylics, it would just kind of want to lift up the paint and go back to your canvas. So you'd probably just wait a little longer and then paint over it. Um, you can actually reconstitute it and repaint the area. I just thought that was worth mentioning. Now I use this pretty much like oils, painting quickly. Um, and I found that it was really good for that technique, but you will get to those, those parts of your painting where it started to dry. And I just wanted to let you know what to do in that kind of transitional phase. So what I'm doing here is adding like uh, some brightness to some of the leaves, poking in leaves here and there. I didn't want it to just look like background and flowers. I wanted a little bit of mid ground, which would be, you know, your leaves and whatnot. And um, I would kind of deepen up some areas using a little phthalo blue if I felt like I needed more shadow. And then even just use the pure white on my brush and just kind of swipe it on my leaves and that would bring out the, uh, the highlight in the leaves very easily. On the rosebuds, you can see those powerful strokes of color and that's achieved by um, mixing on your palette and then laying down thick strokes of paint right next to each other and then letting the colors almost vibrate off of one another. Um, that was a, a pretty common um, technique in the Fovis movement where they just use crazy bright colors and expressive brush strokes. And um, those two movements, Impressionistic and the Fovis movement were very um, close to each other in like the late 1800s. And um, you can see how they, those two styles really influence each other. And I really like to bring some of that energy onto my work, especially working on a very um, kind of traditional type of motif, like a couple of flowers. Another thing I wanted to mention with the Aquila paint is that they do shift a little bit darker uh, when they dry, just like acrylics do. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, watercolor shift lighter, acrylic shift darker, and oils generally stay at the same color. So just be prepared for a slight um, darker shift when it dries. And the reason I mentioned that, I wouldn't have noticed it other than the fact that I had painted a background. I dropped water on it. I blotted it off. I went to match the color, mix it up and match it where I lifted the color. And when it dried, that patch was darker because I was trying to match it to a dry color. So um, I don't think you would really notice overall in the painting that it shifted a little darker, but if you are going to match an area, maybe you lifted something out and you're trying to match it up, you will, it will shift on you uh, slightly darker. So just something to keep in mind. So at this point, I'm just going through with white on its own and I am highlighting the, um, the flower petals. I've done a little bit to some of the leaves, just the ones that I want to be in more focus. And um, also patting in some very pale yellowy green color to kind of brighten up those uh, petals. I think probably what had happened here was that um, the painting was starting to dry and I was noticing it was a little darker than I wanted. So then just by going in with the white, um, I was able to kind of sharpen stuff up a little bit. So when I put the white on my canvas, I mean on my palette paper rather, I at this point I'm just putting down like a little pea sized drop. If I feel like I need more than that, I'll put a couple pea sized drops because um, when you're mixing like this, it's really easy to contaminate your puddle of white and then you end up wasting it. So by putting down a couple tiny puddles, it lets you um, conserve your white. If you end up contaminating it, you've only wasted a little bit. And um, that way you can have like a white for mixing yellow into and a white for mixing, you know, pink into or whatever colors you happen to need. I also like just little sparks of that kind of yellow and white, which is kind of just like a, makes a really pastel buttercream kind of yellow. I think that's really pretty for giving us the impression of a sun dappled flowers. So a lot of what I'm doing here in this painting is not painting what I see in the reference photo, but painting what I feel. And that was really um, the essence of the impressionistic movement. So I know that I have a lot of art teachers who watch this and homeschooling parents. So I urge you to um, let your kids try this. You can let them paint with acrylics if you are worried about oils or give this a Kayla a try because it's probably one of the most safe and um, environmentally conscious paint you can use, uh, but you could totally follow along with acrylics and tempera. I'm a big believer in using what you have, but if you think that the um, qualities of this paint I've been talking about for the past 15 minutes or so uh, would be up your alley, give it a try. It's not crazy expensive. I just converted the um, the Japanese price to United States dollars, and it's about 50 US dollars for that set of 18 colors, um, and they do ship worldwide, so you should be able to get this no matter where you live on the globe and uh, it comes pretty quick I have to say. So what I'm doing in this step it might seem a little crazy but I've picked up this um, uh, like it's like an iron oxide red I can't remember if they call it Indian red or English red but um, it's just really earthy red and I am uh, outlining a few areas to really make the um, uh, the 
painting kind of have a little bit more energy to it. Uh, having that earthy red right next to the green and right next to those white flowers just gives it a little bit of um, definition and contrast. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's completely up to you. But I just thought it needed a little bit of a punch and I, by using a small round brush and that earthy red, I feel like I achieved that. I'm really having a lot of fun with the white petals here, especially those big ones, and I love just kind of packing in as many colors as I can. Um, just make sure that you're keeping them with kind of their color friends on the color wheel so you don't end up with mud. So like I used purples and blues and pinks next to each other, and then in another petal I might use uh, yellows and oranges and peach kind of colors. That way, you know, if I do get a little cool gray, that's fine, but I'm not getting kind of brown and mud in the flower itself. Any kind of brownie tones, I would much rather have in the background. And at this point, I'm just putting on a few final details, and that is it. Before I go, I also wanted to mention that you can layer Aquila with other paints that you already use. You can use it over acrylics, gouache, watercolor, and you can, it works really well with the oils, but you would want to do the oils over the Aquila and let the Aquila dry completely first, and uh, you get a really wonderful effect that way. So you can use it with what you have, which is another plus in my book. I hope you enjoyed this time-lapse demo today, and I hope you give it a try, whether you're using the Aquila paint that I used or you're trying it with your acrylics, gouache, or oil paints. You can totally do this uh, technique and these, this project with any of those paints. I want to thank Kusakabe for sponsoring this video today and encourage you to check out their Aquila paint. And uh, the set of 18 is the one that I'm using here. I think it's a great value and it's a lot of fun to work with. There's also a coupon code in the video description that will save you 10% on your order. Thank you so much for watching today. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Until next time, happy crafting!